As a physician in my first life, I have a question to you, which is whether you think we can stop or reverse the tick-tock, tick-tock of your biological clock. I believe we can. At least slow it down. Why do I think that? Well, firstly, we're already able to do spectacular things with adult stem cells. Forget the debate in the US election about embryonic stem cells. It's already history. It's gone. It's finished. Most of the real excitement scientifically is with adult cells. It's using your own cells. It's taking some of the cells from your mouth, treating them, putting them back into your gums and growing a new tooth right there and then where you need it, just like you did when you were a child and with your second generation dentition. Giving you a third or fourth generation of teeth growing in the natural way within your own gum. Scientists have already managed to take bone marrow uh, from your body, uh, from someone who's had a heart attack. They take it from the hip, take bone marrow, they find cells from your body which have the capacity to regenerate your heart. And they put them back into the vein of your, uh, of your bloodstream. These cells fly around the bloodstream looking for damaged heart muscle. If they sniff out damaged heart muscle, they burrow their way through the capillaries, they leave the bloodstream altogether, and they become totally a self-propelled, self-engineering, replicating heart repair systems. And we are getting up to 86% heart recovery after major heart attacks in clinical trials. Now what I'm telling you was science fiction three years ago. A friend of mine is experimenting at Harvard Medical School with rebuilding the eyes of animals that have gone blind. He believes that in five years time he will be ready to restore the sight of human beings that are blind using their own cells. Just injecting them into the back of the eye and they start to regenerate and rebuild the retina. Macular degeneration is one of the commonest causes of blindness in old people. And this is an incredibly important advance. He believes that it will be a two-hour procedure costing maybe three or four thousand dollars in ten years time. You just go into the clinic, have it done, and go away again, and within a week or two or three or four, your sight begins to grow back. Don't you think that's amazing? While well, you are half asleep, don't you think that's incredible? I'll tell you this, if you've got a mother who's going blind right now, you'd think that was incredible. If you were losing your sight already, you'd think that was incredible. If you had diabetes, and that diabetes is already shrinking those blood vessels on the back of your eye, and you're losing your sight, and you're thinking someone could re-engineer the back of your eye, that's incredible. Who here has got a relative who's had a stroke? Stroke is an awful illness. We have very little to offer, but my friends, Scientists have already managed to mash up the brains of animals with stroke, cause an artificial stroke, take bone marrow cells, and repair the brain of those animals. Do you know something? Something incredible. We discovered by irradiating, uh, we discovered quite by accident that your bone it rebuilds your brain every single day. I was brought up as a doctor to believe that my brain was shrinking from the day I was born. Who heard that nonsense? You know, you'd be getting less and less intelligent from the day you were born, right? That's, well, it's uh, sort of true, but it's sort of not. There was a woman patient who was dying of leukemia, and we blasted her body with almost, well, with totally lethal doses of radiation to kill all the cancer, and we did it beautifully. And then to save her life, we managed to find a guy that had bone marrow that perfectly matched her tissue. We took a bit of her bone marrow, his bone marrow, and seeded her whole body with it, and just this tiny sample completely rebuilt her immune system and her capacity to produce red cells. She recovered and she had a healthy life. When she died, she donated her body to science and scientists cut open her brain. And you know what? They discovered the most incredible thing. They were mega shocked. They found she had a male brain. You say, what? A male brain? Yes. They found that her brain tissue was riddled through and through with XY nerve cells, which had come from her bone transplant. So we're understanding fascinating things about medicine. Let me carry on. We're able to repair the spinal cord in mice and rats. You just cut the spinal cord, put a bit of tissue there from either a human being or from a mouse or from a rat or from the animal itself, and after about 12 weeks, they start running around their cages again. 
could we live to 150 years old? Maybe there are many scientists that believe the first 150 year old human being could be alive today. Could be one of your own children. Does anybody fish here? Did you know that sturgeon fish don't get old, sir? Did you know that if you cut a sturgeon fish, it will heal on its 100th birthday just as well as it did when it was one? Imagine a Mercedes car which has exactly the same risk of breaking down every 12 months, even when it's 150 years old. It doesn't wear out. Can you imagine a body like that? These sturgeon fish don't get old. They have the same risk of breaking down, the same risk of infection, pneumonia, fungus, or getting caught but they don't get old. And in fact, not only sturgeon fish, turtles don't get old, and one type of humpback whale doesn't get old. There are two, Nobel, there are two teams that are locked in a race against time in the United States of America to find the secret between these two types of whale. I've met both these teams. One of them will win a Nobel Prize, I believe, for aging. One of these humpback whales dies in 20 years in the normal way. The other lives for 200 years. You can find these humpbacks, and you know they've got scars on their backs from harpoons that haven't been used for 150 years. These have been scarred by ancient Spanish galleons of a previous era, and they're still swimming around the sea. Now, if we can find what the gene trick is between these two types of humpbacks, and have a look inside the turtle and see if it's the same gene trick, which it probably is, and then look at the sturgeons and check it out again, we could find what that gene does. It produces a protein, no doubt. We could find a way to give the protein. Can you see what I'm saying? Now, here's the question for you. You are in the business of pensions. In fact, I've said you are a pension industry par excellence. Um, now, what would happen, I wonder, if it turned out that the life expectancy forecast for you, sir, what is your name? Hmm? Nick. Nick. If Nick's life expectancy was out by just five years, not a hundred years, but just five years. Do you know what your life expectancy is at the moment, statistically? Okay, not very long. He says, your life expectancy, sir, is 85. And by the way, if you're in Japan and you're a woman, they keep adding 12 months to your life expectancy every 48 months. Wow. My friends, this could be the biggest wild card affecting the whole of your industry in terms of future opportunity and risk. Listen. If we're out by five years on your life expectancy and you work for General Motors, what happens to General Motors' pension fund contingency? I'll tell you this, pension of General Motors becomes technically insolvent. It cannot trade. Why? Because its future pension fund liabilities are greater than its value. Right? So this is actually quite serious, my friends, not just because it's an opportunity for you, but it affects every company you invest in. Right now, my friends. The fact is, you're wrong. Did you know that? Your life expectancy is not 85. Do you know how I know that? Average. So I don't know anything about you personally. It may be that maybe like one in four of all Americans about your age, you have diabetes. I don't know. But supposing you ha your, 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 your health check is normal, your life expectancy is not 85. Did you know I can add 10 years to you today? Do you know why? Because it's an average, isn't it? And you are... Um, well, well educated, well nourished. You were well nourished when your mother carried you in the womb, and you are you aren't uh, uh, as round as as round as a tomato. Uh, you don't smoke like a fi uh, smoke like a, 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 a whatever. Careful, careful. Uh, it's okay. Be careful. careful. Okay. <coughs> Fact of the matter is, there are many people who live just a mile from here, just a mile from here, who have a life expectancy. If, they, if, they're, if they're your age and male, of maybe only a few years. And the reason is because they come from a different socio-demographic background, right? And I'll tell you, for each one that will die in, by the age of 70, just around the corner, there's another that we can add 10 years onto, which will be you. So we say straight away that your average life expectancy is, at, I would say, 95. That's average. Give or take 10. That puts you straight into the 105 territory with a 50, almost a 50% chance to be between 95 to 105 risk. Actually, did you know that already in the United States of America there are 76,000 people over the age of 100 alive? That will rise in the next five years to 150,000. In the next five years, 150,000 people over the age of 100 will be alive. Most of you, you can see, are headed for that. 